Hey, Brock Lemire's here, and in this video, we're going to introduce strings in C. All right, so a string is an array of elements of type car. And so these are important because strings hold like messages that we can read and, and we can write to. So things like hello world, Brock Lemire's. Um, we don't want to have like the, the language characters have to be defined individually. So just like you can make an array of integers and array of doubles, you can make an array of cars. Okay. And the way that the syntax works is you define the, oops, sorry, you define the string initialize a string using double quotes okay and then there's actually a dedicated format specifier for strings which is percent s so you always do have to put car as the type because this is nothing more than a array of cars and you can do something like this where you say mess square brackets always because it's an array and you just put the initialization within double quotes okay now there's one special thing about strings when you create it, it will put the null character as an, the last element. So if I was going to create, uh, I was going to create this hello. I would basically have H E L L O, and then when I created it, C will actually come in and put the null character at the end, and that indicates that the string is done. Okay, and we're going to see that and the reason you do that is because you can allocate memory that's like much, much larger than what you initialize. And this becomes really handy when you do things like print. So if I had like a hundred element array and I only use the first, you know, five characters, we could in the print F statement, it will only print up until it sees the null. Okay, so this is like the equivalent of doing it uh, character by character. You'd open curly brackets and then do the character notation for an individual car. So you do capital H E L L O, and then you put the null character at the end. Now you might be going, what is, what's a null character? <laughs> so the ASCII code is eight bits. American standard for coding, coding, American standard for information interchange american standard code for information interchange there's 256 spots okay unique codes but we don't have that many letters and we don't have that many symbols so what they did is they started assigning other things so like special characters such as the null or things like start a header geez, start a header start a text and attack stuff like that the null is basically just hex character zero and in c we use that c uses that to indicate that the string is done okay it's at the end so let's code away here let's try this out we'll try a couple different things so i'm going to make a new directory called mod 10 code along and i'm gonna change into mod 10 and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna vim strings 1.c and i'm gonna go ahead and start playing with strings so i'm gonna playing with strings okay so let's go ahead and start it we're gonna do pound uh include and we'll go ahead and grab the standard io.h so we can do a bunch of printfs we'll set up our main function so int main void open curly come on down return zero close curly close well, down there <laughs> zero and then close curly we're off and running okay so i'm gonna come up here and we're gonna do this let's go ahead and create a string so it's an array of type cars i'll call it mess <clears throat> i'll go ahead and just uninitialize i won't give it a dimension yet and then i'll do hello and then done okay then i'm interested in actually saying seeing what the size of this is okay so i'm going to go int and then i'm going to say size mess and that's going to be equal to size of this array and then i'm going to do that because i want to do this i want to go print f and then say uh the message and then i'm going to put, use the format specifier for strings which is percent s takes and i want to put the size in bytes so i'm going to do format specifier percent d to print an integer and decimal bytes okay and then what i'll do is i'll line return it do that and then let's pull this over so we don't have so much line wrapping and then let's put mess and size mess and we'll pull it over even more so it doesn't wrap so mess the string mess will go and be printed here size of mess will be printed right there Let's go ahead and come down here and see what's going on. So let me change to my mod 10 code along. Take a look. 
there's my strings. I'm gonna go GCC strings, uh, direct the output executable to strings, uh, and then good to go. Let's run it. I mean, we got, let's go run it with strings. Uh, so let's do dot forward slash strings. And there we go. The message, hello, takes six bytes. Now you're going, I thought it was one, two, three, four, five. There's five characters. Why does it take six? Because of the old null character. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So the null is actually in there. Okay. And that's because we didn't de define the dimension. We let the compiler determine which, uh, how big the thing was. Okay. All right. Let's, let's make it bigger and kind of see what the impact of that is. So let's actually go in here. Um, let me pull this down so it's not going to jump on us so much. Uh, let me make this 10. Let me make it 10 bytes. So 10 bytes. <clears throat> Life is good. So then it should print like hello and then a bunch of stuff, right? A bunch of spaces maybe. So you GCC it, you run it, and it says hello takes 10 bytes. Let me clear that and run it again and think about what's happening. Look at the message. The message printed good. It only printed H-E-L-L-O. It didn't have a bunch of spaces. And that's because that's what the format specifier percent %s does. It only puts the characters in here up until the null character. And then what happens is it did take 10 bytes, right? So it's like, okay, it took, uh, <clears throat> it was actually 10 bytes long because that's how big we made it. Okay, so it's like, all right, that's kind of kind of interesting. Okay, there is one formatting option with the format specifier percent or percent s. You can actually do, uh, you can actually put the number of characters that will be printed, and then left justify or right justify, and it will just pad with spaces until it gets there. So as an example, let me put in here eight. That's going to put eight characters down no matter what the size of hello is so it's basically going to pad it with a little bit so it'll pad it with five spaces and then what we can do is to see that effect let's do this i'm gonna go star 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 and then i'll go star 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 so this is going to be like 10 it's gonna be six plus eight so it's 14 characters total and then what i'm going to do is this will be right justified let me copy and paste that and i'm going to do dash that means left justified. So let's see what that looks like when I do this. So let me compile this little buddy. I'm gonna run this little buddy. And look at what it did here. It basically said, oh yeah, I'm gonna pad this with spaces, but depending on whether it's left justified or right justified is where they'll go. Okay, so that's really the only formatting option you have. Uh, usually you don't format stuff like that. All right, strings are arrays and arrays are pointers. <laughs> so you can absolutely use array syntax on this. And so this one won't be as wide. So let me, let me do this. I'm gonna push this over here. And then what we'll do is this. Let's, let's set up two arrays. One is car uh, A and equals world. So just like we did. And now let's do another one that is car, but it's a pointer variable equals world. <clears throat> and now let's think about that. It's like, is, well, are those the same thing? It's like, they actually are the same thing. If I go uh, print F and I say uh, percent S and then line return, and then I said, all right, uh, well, and then I put in here A, and then I copied and pasted that, and I updated this to be B. And it's like, are those gonna print the same thing? And it's like, they did. <laughs> So remember this syntax right here, A is just a pointer to the first address of the array. In this situation, we said, you know what, skip the square brackets. B is going to be a pointer variable that holds the address of the first location of the array. So you can use the same syntax uh, as with arrays, okay? Now scanf can also read information in. So you can actually come in here and be like, all right, let's 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 read in information from the user. So let's do car C, uh, let's make it 10 wide, and then let's do this, uh, print F, and then say, enter a string, and then do scan F, and then go uh, read it in as a string, and put it into C, and now you gotta be looking at this thing going, wait a minute, where's the ampersand? You don't have to use an ampersand because this is already a pointer. 
So that's the beauty. Before when we use the regular a scalar variable, we were using the reference. So we had to say, go to the address of that reference. In this situation, C is the address so that we don't even need that ampersand now. So now let me do this, print F, and I go U, and third, and then we'll go S, and then return the little guy, okay? All right, feeling pretty good, feeling pretty good. Let's see what we got. So let's go uh, GCC. Run it. Okay, enter a string. All right, let's let's bring this up just so you can see a little bit. And you know what I'm print? I'm gonna say Brock. Why did it do that? Holy cow! It's because <laughs> I didn't put the variable in in uh, the printf. I forgot to put that. I'll tell you what. When you do when you do pointers, you see a lot of the segmentation fault core dump stuff <laughs> because you cannot access something that's not taken care of. So all right, enter a Brock. Start enter a string, Brock, you entered Brock. Okay? Yeah, easy. All right? All right, let's do this. Uh, let's do it again and type Brock Lemire's. Okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run this again. I'm not even going to compile. I'm going to say Brock Lemire's. Hey, where'd my last name go? <laughs> the way scanf works with strings is it will ignore all leading non-white or all leading white space, and it will end when you hit white space. So if I do this, I go strings, then I go space, 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 then I go Brock, and then was here. It just ignores everything in front of it, and then as soon as it sees a space, nukes everything else. It's done. Okay, it, and it just says done. Okay, <laughs> so kind of interesting. Uh, what about this? All right, let's 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 not put a space in there. So let me just do this, uh, Brock. And there's 10 of these elements. So this will be five, 10, 15, 20. I'm gonna enter in uh, 20 things. It took it, right? And it's like, what did, wait a minute, why, why did it take it? I, I, entered fit, I entered 20 of these things, okay? There's only supposed to be nine spots or there's only supposed to be 10 spots in this character of which the last one is going to be the null it's like it took it all in how, how is that possible it, this turns out this is actually a vulnerability of scanf when you read scanf into string into strings it does not stop reading in until it sees a white space or a return so i could go like this i could be like you know what uh strings i'm just gonna do this i'm just gonna read into it i'm sure there's plenty of memory on this uh, linux server let's do this let's do this and then uh it took the whole thing and i overrode the memory of other variables so it dumped the core this is a vulnerability it's called a buffer overflow attack so somebody could maliciously do this if they knew that if they figured out that you were using scanf with strings then they would just overload you and try to overwrite memory and dump the core or they would insert uh ex instruction codes of malware and trick your computer into running it and that's called a buffer insertion attack okay so no good so scanf is notorious for being kind of a vulnerable thing all right and you might go well doesn't this bound it and the answer is no it doesn't all this does is it reserves memory it puts a pointer to the first address and then it just lets it scan f is the problem it's not this scan f is what overrode everything else okay so scan f no good now okay so we probably could use pointers right so th this must be better so let's go over here let's do this uh what if i came in here and i did the exact same thing and i'm like you know what let's do instead of doing this thing right here let's go car let me let me make a pointer so i'm gonna go star d underscore pointer enter a string oops enter a string let's, let's go ahead and comment this out so we're not even going to use it we're using uh pointers now go over here and do d pointer and then we'll come down here and do d underscore pointer and let's run that and see what happens because uh, let's do, 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 do gcc let me pull this down so you can see the code that i just typed Run strings, enter a string, the Lemires, the Lemires, dumped. <laughs> so when you use pointers, it gets even worse, right? So it's it's like if you even go over a little bit, you're done. Okay. So what what are we gonna do here? Well, it turns out there's another uh, function that's really cool called fgets. And this is actually in the standard io.h library, and it allows you to bound the incoming stream. 
okay? So here's the way it works. Number one, it takes in a string as an argument, then it takes the size of the string in terms of how much it'll allow to come in, and then it tells you where, you give it an argument of where the, the string is coming from. When we take it from the command line, it's called standard in, okay? It can also take it from a file or other sources, but this is, we're gonna use standard in, okay? So F gets is good, all right? So let's let's do that, okay? Let's let's go down here. <clears throat> and now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna comment out all this, uh, this scanf stuff because it gets it makes it screws everything up when it's in there uh it actually doesn't screw it up it's just that when you do the scanf it might leave something on the buffer uh the input buffer so let's do this car e 10 life is good okay all right and then here we go so i'm gonna go print f and then i'm gonna say enter a string again and now i'm gonna use this function called f gets formatted get <laughs> string okay formats get string okay i'm going to give it the pointer to the string which is e i'm going to give it the size that i will allow before it st starts ignoring and i will take that from standard in so now i go print f and all i need to do is say you entered entered and then i'm going to do the format specifier for a string which is percent s and then i'll go ahead and return it and then i'm going to put into the format specifier percent s e Okay, so there it is right there. So now let's go see what we got. All right, do, 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 do. so GCC, and then let me, let me clear this, getting all over the place. Let's run this little fella, and let's say, all right, enter a string. And I'm gonna go like this, I'm gonna go Lemire's. You entered Lemire's, thanks. All right, run again. Now let's do Lemire's. Lemire's, that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's 14 characters. It stopped at 10. Now, did it start at 10? I was like, well, hang on a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How come it only took nine characters? It's because it used the 10th for the null. So the null is always there. That is a string. Okay. Now, there is an size of is very cool when you use f gets because sometimes like you you define this e10 but over here you're like oh, I, can't, I don't want to keep track of these hard-coded values so you can do size of e and that'll actually do it automatically and everything works the same it's like uh, gcc and then you run it and it's like lemires lemires and it's like perfect okay so size of is usually how you see the the f gets used now one one little trick on F gets, and it is a little annoying, is that when you put in a string, it is going to store the return, the line character as part of the string, okay? So unfortunately, it's just a reality. So you're gonna type a string, so let's say I did Brock, all right, so let's go, uh, let me run this, let me do this, and I go Brock, okay? Notice that it had an extra return there, right notice that when i do this i go grok grok notice there wasn't a return it's because it actually brings in the line return as part of the input array so this brock actually has brock line return then null whereas when i over when i filled up the buffer it didn't have room to put the line return and so that's why there's no line return right here and so it's an annoying part of f gets but there's one function you can do if if you can't live with it which is it's called string length and you'll learn about this later but it's a function in the, a library called string.h where you can find the length of an array <clears throat> and then you basically say i got the length take that and de minus one from it and that will serve as the index of the array of where that stupid line return is and then use that index to the array and just put null there so basically what will happen is that in this example i'd have brock line return null i would have brock null null if you use that okay so just watch for that when you use f gets you'll see all these different line returns in there and it'll drive you bonkers and that is it that is an introduction to strings see ya